This morning. Amen. Do you have anything to be thankful about this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Thankful for the little things this morning. Amen. Well, I know. Got such a powerful meaning to it. I pray that it'll bless your heart this morning. Amen. Let the Lord have his way this morning. Let him touch your heart. Amen. Amen. Y'all bear with me.
since they're closing in when the tide is swiftly rising and you wonder where he's been oh friend there never was a moment that his arms weren't reaching out and you can rest assured and be secure god is moving right now Around you and your walls they're closing in the tide it's swiftly rising and you wonder where he's been for there never was a moment that his arms weren't reaching out and you can rest assured and be secure God is moving right now stay still and let go needs to hear this verse this morning. And your walls, they're closing in. That tide, it's swiftly rising. And you wonder where he's been. Well, friend, there never was a moment that his arms weren't reaching out. You can rest assured be secure god is moving right now stand still and let god move standing still is hard to do make a way for surrounding your walls they're closing in the tide is it's still rising you still question where he's been but there never was a moment he wasn't reaching down he said come on take my hand and rest assured i'll be secure he's moving here right now oh stay still and let god move
let him move and to cross over into the promised land. And what a time it is. They've made it through the wilderness. And all those that murmured and complained, the Bible says they fell in the wayside. All those that complained and carried on and, you know, uh, God allowed them to wander in the wilderness until they were all gone. And the children, those that came after them that held faith and Praise God, they got to see the promised land. And as we're looking here in the book of Joshua in the first chapter, I want to bring your attention down to verse number 6. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 6. And the Bible says, Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. That's a promise. God tells Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide. You will divide unto this congregation the inheritance that I promised to their fathers. Only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all of the law, the condition. There's a promise, but there's a condition. To observe to do all that is according to the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded them, turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left, that thou, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The promise is that heaven is ours. The condition is to be born again. Amen. Everybody wants heaven, but not everybody wants to be born again. Everybody wants the blessing, but not everybody wants the trouble or the trial that precedes the blessing. Amen. But look at verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. How to do it. <laughs> God gives us a promise. And then he gives us the condition that is necessary to reach the promise. But he doesn't leave us without that, but he gives us the way to do it. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. How, Brother Billy, am I going to make heaven my home? I'm just an old plow boy down here in South Georgia. Ain't never had much. Ain't never, you know, managed a whole lot in the, the, uh, the confines of this world. I, my mama loved me. My daddy loved me. Most of my family loved me. But other than that, not, not a whole lot good I've done in this life. How can I make heaven my home? The Lord tells us that the promise is there that heaven is for us. The condition is to, amen, make Christ Lord and Savior of your life. And then to meditate upon him day and night. To walk in the way of the, that which is written. Hallelujah. How do we make heaven our home today? When we really look at ourselves, and the Bible tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags. And I don't know about you, but I've had this conversation with me many a time. Son, how, how did you manage to do this? Knowing how much God loves you and how much he cares for you, how did you manage to say this or do that or not do this or not do that? Have you ever had that conversation with yourself? I didn't want to do I didn't mean to do that. I shouldn't have done I know better than to do that. And then you sit there and you get that little whooping, you know. Oh, it, 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 it just, it never gets easy to handle. And I hope it never gets easy for any of us to handle displeasing God. I always want it to be hard in the sense that I want us to feel remorse whenever we have disobeyed God. And that, that whooping, so to speak, is necessary. Amen. It, it's a, it, it's a must have. And last week we had Father's Day and I made the statement and Sister Barbara did and several others in their testimony that, you know, we had great fathers, but a great father is someone who not only tells you he loves you, he shows you he loves you, but he corrects you when you are wrong. That's part of it. And without those parts, you can have correction without love, and you're going to have a, a hard relationship. You can have love without correction, and you're going to have a spoiled brat. You need all of it to work together in order for that child to come up 
in order for us to raise up and be mature in the Lord. We need His love. We need to be shown His love. But we also need His correction. We need His instruction. Hallelujah. And He said, The how is the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's how we're going to make it is by meditating upon this word. And whenever you find yourself in trouble and you find yourself out of the way, you find yourself in a situation or you need to make a decision or something's pressing into your uh, uh, to your heart or a relationship or there's a trouble abroad, you can go to this word and you can find the answer if you'll ask God to help you. Amen. Amen. He's given us this word as a road map and a help to make it home. When I look, if I try to walk in my own my own uh, uh, will and my own way, if I try to do it based on what I've been taught instead of seeking God's word, I'll make a mistake. I'll interpret something wrong. I'll, I'll not remember correctly what somebody said, and, and I'll begin to add or take away. But if I'll stay with this word, then it'll keep me on the straight and narrow. The Bible tells me that it is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light for the path that I'm walking. A lamp for your feet. How many of you ever come out in the midnight to go maybe get a glass of milk or maybe go to the restroom and you didn't want to turn the light on, didn't want to bother nobody? What usually happens? You usually stump your toe on something. You've walked that hallway seven million times, but that coffee table still gets you even 30 years later. Amen. And causes you to make a mistake with God. <laughs> You may say something bad or it may put you in a bad mood. I don't know what the issue is, but I'm just saying, if you have some light for your feet, you tend not to make a mistake. Amen. And if we meditate in that word and we allow that word to be a lamp in our feet, I believe that we'll walk accordingly. But I like verse number 9. Well, let me finish verse 8. So the how is the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. He says, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Amen. You want to be blessed? You stay in God's Word. And that's part of our responsibility. Amen. That's our responsibility. There's a promise. There's a condition. There's a way to make it. And then there is a responsibility that we have. If we stay in His Word, if we uh, 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 adhere to His Word, if we allow it to light our path, He said, then our way shall, we shall make our way prosperous. Now, there's nothing that we can do outside of God. But I promise you that if you'll stay in God and keep your eyes on Him, you will prosper in this life in the fact of your relationship with God. I believe that there was also a, 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 a help here. For Joshua and, and the, the monetary things of this life as far as cattle and lands and ability to grow and to, uh, to reap and to harvest. I believe that there was a prosperous blessing that was uh, included in this. But I believe God's really wanting us to, to look at the main thing and that's to keep our eyes on Him. Sister David, if we'll keep our eyes on the Lord, we'll prosper in all that we do. That's what His Word tells us. And then thou shalt have good success. Hallelujah. We sung the song earlier, you know, about I may not be wealthy in these clothes, they may not be new. But, Lord, as long as I have you, that's all I need. And many a time I've, I've fallen on that truth because there's, you know, uh, just to be honest with you, I'll probably never, you know, be a millionaire. I don't, I don't foresee it happening in my natural ability. I don't have the ability to do it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a good worker. I love my job. I love my family. But I'll probably never prosper in business in that way. Just wasn't, you know, my, my strong suit. But I don't need all of that. Because I've got something far greater than what money can buy. And it's easy sometimes to get discouraged. We all get discouraged, you know, in, in the things that we don't have sometimes. And we look around and we see others. That, that you know, I'm not going to harp on anybody that, that's ever gotten down and out a, a time or two because... You know, that's just life. But at the end of it, we have to look at ourselves and we have to say, but what I have found is greater than anything that this world has to offer. What I have in my heart is more than enough. And I'm thankful to God. Because look at number nine. He says, have not I commanded thee? And this is where I get to this morning. Sometime, you know, God's given us a promise. We know the condition. Amen. He shows us the way. We walk the way. We're in the way. Praise God. Thankful for the way. 
We know our responsibility, but yet even in that we find ourselves struggling to try to hold on. And that's when he comes in at the end. He says, have not I commanded thee? In other words, I'm not going to just let you fall just because you're weak. But he says, I'm going to come and I'm going to help you. And the, the reason I think this is is because God knows who we are. God knows who we are. And as good as I want to be for God, there are times in my life when I'm not what I should be. And in those moments, it's the enemy attacks, and he attacks, and he attacks, and he says, Sister Barbara, he says, I've got him right where I want him. I'm going in for the kill. This is what he does to all of us. But it's at this moment here when God, I believe, intercedes on our behalf. And he says, I know this young, this one belongs to me. And how many of you kick your youngins out when they make a mistake? I don't like it, but I ain't fit to let somebody else take them off and hurt them. I'm going to fight for them. And God says, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever you go. Amen. Amen. Even whenever I don't feel like it, he's with me. Even whenever I'm down and out, he's with me. If I'm on the mountaintop, he's with me. If I'm in the valley, he's with me. If I'm successful, he's with me. If I'm not successful, he's still with me. He ain't giving up on me. And that's something this morning that causes me to keep wanting to push forward. He ain't giving up on me. Dear Lord, we thank you this day, Lord, for your many blessings upon us. Father, we ask you, Lord, for a few more minutes of time. Lord, bless, Lord, this message. Father, encourage us, strengthen us, lift us up, God. Help us this morning. Father, do that that you'd have us to do. We look to you, Lord, the author of the finish of our faith this day. And Father, we praise you and we thank you and we glorify in your name. Help us this morning, God. Father, do that that you'd have us to do. Let us this morning, Father, feel your spirit. Lord, as it continues to move in this service, Lord, let us this day, Father, be glad and rejoice in it, Father. Lord, let us, Father, Lord, leave this place lifted up and blessed and encouraged, Lord, and strengthened. And, Father, and looking forward, Lord, to doing that that you'd have us to do in and out throughout this day. And, Father, now we just give you the honor and the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we look at this and we see the condition, or we see the, uh, the promise, you know, where God tells him, you know, to be strong of a good courage. Uh, he says, you're going to divide this land of the people. Uh, that's an I will, if you want to say it that way. Amen. God says this is something that's going to take place. And Joshua, in the moving of, uh, of the people, bringing them up to the brink of the River Jordan, uh, there's fixing to be a, 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 an obstacle here that they're going to have to face. Uh, uh, but God's going to roll back the waters, amen, just as he did the Red Sea. He's going to do the same uh, for this River Jordan. And the Bible says that they're going to cross over on dry ground. Hallelujah. And then he tells the priest, amen, or he tells the 12 men, he says, get you each a rock. And go back, and I want you to set it in the midst of that river, Jordan. And it's going to be a memorial, amen, that whenever that thing's low, the people are going to see those rocks stacked up in there. And your children's going to ask, what does this mean? And they're going to say, this signifies uh, the day that God rolled the waters back and we came across into this promise. Hallelujah. And I look at the day and hour in which we live in, amen, that there's been some promises that God's made uh, to each and every one of us, amen. The, big, the greatest promise uh, is that I'll never leave you nor forsake you, hallelujah. I don't care where you are or what you're going through, what it's, it's up or it's down. Uh, the Bible tells us, amen, that God loves us. Uh, and if we've excluded, or if we've uh, uh, put any love towards him, hallelujah, uh, uh, just a monicum of faith, it doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, but he says the faith the size of a mustard seed. You think about that. It doesn't take her. God's not asking a lot out of us. Uh, but just have a little bit of faith in me. Uh, and he says, I will be with you to help you and keep you. Amen. The promise to Joshua, hallelujah, was that he was going to bring the children across and fulfill that which he had promised to Moses. Now, we know that Moses didn't make it. Moses has passed away uh, some time before this. Uh, but he lays uh, uh, that anointing upon Joshua and tells Joshua to carry on and do that which God has commanded. But verse number 9, if we get to that point, Have not I commanded thee to be strong and of a good courage, to be, a, to be not afraid, neither be dismayed. And I, I get this understanding that whenever God was speaking with Joshua, it was a task 
that Joshua just could not get his little mind wrapped around how he was going to do what God had called him to do. He heard the promise. He knew God was with him. He had been a, a part of this excursion from the time that Moses said, Gather up your goods and let's go. He had been there from the beginning. He had walked and talked with Moses. He had been in the trenches with Moses. He had stood between Moses and the people when they wanted to stone Moses. He was one of the guys that, regardless of what everybody else did, uh, he held on to Moses. He loved him and honored him uh, because he saw God working through him. And because of this, because he held on, amen, and would not be dismayed or would not be discouraged or would not be pulled one side or to the other, but rather stayed the course, amen, God, amen, saw something in him. Uh, and whenever it was time for Moses to go on, God used Joshua. Joshua just couldn't understand. He thought so much of Moses. God, how can I feel these shoes? How can I do this? And God tells him, son, be not, be strong and be of a good courage. For unto this people you shall divide this land. In other words, I'm going to use you. And can you imagine the weight that that must have felt like on a young man's shoulders who's never been in that position before? Moses dealt with the same thing. Amen. Even to the point that God has to come to him in an audible voice in a burning bush. Can you imagine that? In the middle of a desert. And he tells you to put off your shoes, son. You're standing on holy ground. In other words, you in the presence of the I am that I am. Hallelujah. And he says, I'm fit to talk to you. And from that moment forward, amen, he encouraged Moses to go and do what Moses needed to do. Joshua feeling that weight, a lot like a lot of us, when we feel the weight of whatever it is that God's uh, doing in our life, there's a weight that, that comes with that. It's a, uh, uh, that responsibility and that knowing what to do and to do it. Uh, uh, sometimes we, we feel uh, inferior to carry it out, don't we? Amen. Sometimes we feel like we don't have what it takes to walk this race. Sometimes, you know, to hold the course and to hold the old line, as the, uh, uh, the old timers used to say, to walk that straight in their way. Sometimes we, well, I can't do that. I don't have it in me. But I promise you, you do. If you've accepted Jesus into your heart, he says, I'm with you. I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. When we get to looking at the weight of everything that weighs on us, as Joshua does here, and, and God goes on in to encourage him, uh, uh, telling him to be strong and to be courageous. He says, this is how you're going, to, you're going to observe the word. You're going to observe all that I said, amen, unto Moses. In other words, you was close to Moses. And as Moses heard things, he expressed them things to Aaron. And I believe Joshua heard them too. What I'm saying is this, we've heard good preaching for a long parts of our life. We may have heard some shady characters as well, but we've heard enough good preaching, amen, to, uh, to give us courage and to help us to know what's right and what's wrong, amen. In other words, we know what to do, hallelujah. We've been encouraged, but we also have his written word, uh, amen, to hide in our hearts and to know how to walk this life. Joshua, feeling that burden. God, how am I going to do this? Your people such a great people. Even Solomon made the statement. He said, God, who am I that I can go out and judge such a great and a mighty people? Joshua probably feeling that same weight on his shoulder. You know, God, they, I, I don't know how. I've just been a sword bearer for Moses. I've just been one that would, would try to protect and fight for you, God. I love you. And I, but, God, I don't know how to do this. God said, observe to do all according to the law. Keep it. Turn not from it to the right hand nor to the left hand. How are we going to get through this problem? Amen. How are we going to get through this, Sister Diane? We walking through something. How am I going to make it to the end of this journey? I'm going to do it because I'm holding to the hand of the man that never fails. How am I going to get through this trouble, this trial? We've heard bad news. We've heard this out of the other. We're going through a storm. We're going through a trial. How am I going to make it through it? Because I'm not going to give up on him who did not give up on me. Hallelujah. When we talked about Wednesday night, when he went to the cross, he didn't give 25%, but he gave 100%. Amen. He didn't go half-heartedly. He went all the way. Amen. And he wants us, amen, to hold to him all the time. To honor him with our whole heart. God, how can I do this? How can I make it, God? 
God, I'm struggling. I, I, I've been in this way for a long time is what I can hear Joshua saying. I, I've walked around that mountain with those same people that were discouraged and, and, and began to murmur and complain. He said, I visually watched water come out of a rock in the middle of the desert and watched the cattle and the people drink. Amen. I was there when the doves and when the, uh, the manna was provided for us and we ate in the middle of a wilderness. He said, God, I know you can do anything, uh, but who am I, God, to be able to do such a great and a mighty work? Well, maybe you don't think that your work is so great and mighty. But the Bible tells us that God, amen, takes notice of one soul. Can you imagine today of all days, whenever churches all across the world are having services, and there's one that's walking the aisle right now somewhere. I, I don't know where that someone is, but somewhere somebody's giving their heart to Jesus right now. Hallelujah. And heaven, amen, is paused, amen, overlooking the balconies. And they're be fixing to sing a new song, amen. They're fixing to shout a new shout, amen, over one more soul, amen, that's welcomed into the family of God. We are important to God. We are very important to God. Whether you were saved yesterday or five days ago or 10 years or 50 years ago, you are still just as important to God as the first day that you said yes. And he says, I have been with you the whole time and the whole way. He says, I haven't moved. And if you're cold and indifferent, he says, it's you that has moved away from me, not me from you. How can we do this? We've got to stay close to him. Pray. He said to meditate Therein, day and night. Oh, that word meditate means to think on Him. You can use it as prayer. You can use it as singing, as worship. But to meditate means that He consumes your thought and your mind. He is on your heart and mind. And He says, do this day and night. Mm. If we've done that, just think how much better our daily life would be. Mm. He whose mind has stayed upon the Lord. Amen. He's given us the way. He says, you can do it if you'll think upon me. Amen. The Bible tells us, Jesus said, to hunger and to thirst after righteousness. Amen. And all of your needs would be met if you'll seek the kingdom of God first. In other words, he didn't say, don't get up and go to work. Don't do this and don't do that. I, 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 we've gotten to the place in the church where it's more about what you can't do than what you can do. And I thought about this. What would it be, amen, if we begin to encourage the people that we can have a, a blessing. We can have a wonderful time. We can enjoy this life. Think about that. The church has gotten to the place, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. I can't do this, I can't do that. And we just get more and more in the mully grub. I can go out and have a good time. I can't enjoy this life. I can't do the things that I used to do. But praise God, look what more I can do that I'm free, amen, and that Jesus Christ has set me free to see the real beauty in life, to know what real love is, and to experience, amen, a joy and a peace, amen, that I never knew before. Hallelujah. I've been set free, amen, and now I can live, amen, like nobody else can. I'm not under the, the mully girls because I can't do this out of the other. I don't want to do that. I want to do what God wants me to do. And when I really begin to look at it, God wants so much more for me than the old me could ever have done. Amen. Think about how much sweeter it is. Amen. That when you love your children and your families and you, you enjoy things so much more when they come to the knowledge of Christ. Why? Because you know what real love is. And you know what real uh, uh, to live is. You, you see the beauty in everything that God has created. And this is what he's trying to encourage us with. He says, son, you can do it. I don't care what task has been laid upon you. You can make it because I'm with you. Uh, I've showed you the way. I've given you my word. Uh, and he says, after all of that, if you're still struggling, uh, he says, have not I commanded you, uh, amen, that I'm going to be with you. Hmm. I'm going to be with you, not just in word, but in person. Hallelujah. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The person, the Holy Ghost is with us. The Spirit of God, He's here. 
He said, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll not leave you without. He said, but I'll be with you and I'll be in you. In other words, he didn't just write it on a piece of paper and say, here, take it. And, and if you know, no, -uh. he said, I'm going to go with you myself. He says, I'm going to write it on the fleshy tables of their heart. In other words, he said, I'm going to be in you, uh, and I'm going to work through you. Uh, and if you honor and serve me, and you meditate upon me, in other words, you put me first in your life. He says, you're going to have success in this life. Not as this world sees success, uh, but you're going to have success. Why? Because you're going to understand love. You're going to have peace. You're going to have joy. Even in the midst of chaos, uh, you're going to be able to celebrate and sing a song, amen. And the people's going to wonder how, but you're going to say, it's because of the love of God in my heart. I've overcome, and I'm going to make it at the end of this journey. Tell yourself right now, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. This world is hard, but the Bible tells me, Jesus said, be of good courage. Amen. He says, for I have overcome this world. Hallelujah. He who hung between the heavens, amen, says, I have overcome this world, and we're in him and him and us, amen, and we're going through regardless of what this world says. Regardless of what the news says, regardless of what the doctors say, regardless of what this one says or that one says, we're going through. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. So I want to leave you with that this morning. I want you to be strong and to be of a good courage. And look at that enemy and say, I know you may be fighting my children. You may be fighting me on my job. You may be fighting me in this city or in this county. Or you may be fighting whatever it may be in your life. You know, I understand, devil, that you're doing what you're supposed to do. But just let me remind you of who I am. Let me tell you who I belong to. And sometimes you just have to get that boldness, amen. You have to take God's word, amen, for what it says. And be strong and be courageous, amen. And look at that enemy and say, it ain't in my might and it ain't in my power. But it is, amen, by the Spirit of God. It is because he lives in me. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Uh, and I'm not kowtowing. I'm not bowing down. Uh, but I'm pressing on and going through. Uh, and you fight if you want to. Uh, but you're already defeated. You've already been taken care of. And all I'm doing is waiting on Jesus to come back and to take me home. Hallelujah. Be strong and be of a good courage. Be not afraid. And he said, neither be dismayed. As I close, I think about Peter. As he was on the ship. And the Bible says that a storm had come up. Now, I don't know about you, but that storm represents a lot of things that we face in our life. He was with the other 12. He was with the 11. And they were in this ship, and they were going across on the sea. And I believe this sea, whenever they left, was, was smooth. I believe there was no trouble. A lot like a lot of us. You know, we're a little church, and we're sailing through, and things seem to be good sometime. But then all of a sudden, a storm rises. And it happens always at midnight, don't it? <laughs> My young has always got the sickest at midnight. You know, whenever you wanted to sleep so bad, that's whenever they was throwing up the worst. You know, whatever the problem was, it always got worse at night. And here they are at midnight or in that late night hour. And all of a sudden, they see something walking across the water. And some of them said, no, nah, Lord, it's a ghost. Peter said, no, nah, that looks like Jesus. He told him not to be afraid and bid him to come out there on the water. You know, sometime in this life, whenever we're going through and everything seems like it's all right, then a storm rises, and we want to be afraid. And sometimes we forget who we are in the midst of hard times. It's easy to, to look at oneself and say, I, I can't get through this. I can't do this. I can't make it. Uh, the, the, the circumstances are overwhelming. The, the amount's too high. The problem's too big. There's no way I can get through it. And I'm reminded when Jesus said, For all things work together for the good. To them that love him are called according to his purpose. Even the hard times God has put in our path for a reason. Amen. So that why? So that in that moment we can have faith. 
and we can look at something that's insurmountable. We can look at a mountain and say, there's no way I can move it. But mountain, let me remind you of who I am. <laughs> My God can move you. My God can take care of you just like that. But what do we do too many times? Stand there at the foot of the mountain and we cry. We bawl our eyes out. Oh, God, it was going so good. Now look at this mountain. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Forget who it is that moves the mountains for us. I can see Joshua. God, how am I going to do such a great task? God, how are we going? How, how's this going to happen? And God said, have I not commanded you? You've been with me this long. Have you not known? That I can do anything. Do you believe that this morning? Yes. That the God that you serve can do anything. Amen. He's not hindered unless we clamp his hands down through unbelief. The only thing that displeases God as far as I, as far as I really understand it. The only thing that really causes God not to be able to work in our life is unbelief. Amen. Is unbelief. You can say something wrong. You can act the wrong way. You can do something, you know, that a lot of people won't forgive you for. But God will put you in his arms and he'll say, I love you and I forgive you. He'll take you. No matter how dirty you are. No matter how much you've messed up. People won't, but God will. But the one thing that hurt, the one thing that hinders him is whenever we don't trust him and believe him. He said, Joshua, I've commanded you, son. You're going to do this. I'm with you. Don't be afraid. And don't be dismayed. Hallelujah. Church, if you will, let's all stand this morning. Amen. God is with us wherever, so ever we go. You know, there was a cartoon many years ago, and some of you may remember it with your children or may, may have watched some of it yourself as a child. Tom and Jerry was always one of my favorite cartoons. Still is today. And I remember, you know, when I was a little boy, we'd go over to Granny and Papa's and we'd watch Tom and Jerry. And on that thing that sometimes they'd be a bulldog. He was a big old bad bulldog. And they'd always have him locked up, you know, at that little dog house. And they'd, some of them, they'd have a little puppy, you know. I can't remember his name now to save my life, but. Every now and then, old Tom, you know, he'd, he'd do something to that puppy. That little old puppy would go to yapping. Yap, 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 yap. About the time Tom would turn around, he'd just be nose in the seven foot eight belly, you know. That old big daddy done come. What? He'd take care of Tom. He'd grab that little pup up and put him on his shoulder, so to speak, and take him back. And he'd just love all over him, you know. And I thought about that so many times, you know. That little puppy knew who to call on. If we'll trust our Father with all of our heart, He'll be there. I want to encourage you with that this morning. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. Amen. And let the Lord bless you. Let the Lord help you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day, Lord, for your many blessings upon us. This altar is open if there be anyone that needs to pray. God, go with us this day, Father. Look over us and keep us. Father, strengthen us, Lord. We praise you, Lord, for your presence in this service. Father, we thank you, Lord. You've encouraged us today, Father, one more time. Father, to keep pressing into this life that we live, Father. It can be hard sometimes. Father, it can be cold and it can be indifferent. And we thank you, Lord, for your precious spirit that comes and blesses us, anoints us, encourages us, and helps us. And Father, makes us feel that fellowship, that kinship, that we are your children. Lord, we ask you, Lord, Father, to touch every heart, strengthen and encourage each one that's in this service. God, and remember our families, our loved ones, Father, those that, Father, that we hold up dear in prayer. God, there's some of them that are lost. There's some of them that are sick. There's some of them that, Father, they're just in a, in a way, Lord, that they, they can't be reached. They can't hardly be touched. And Father, I pray, Father, that you'd soften those hard hearts. Father, that you'd minister, Lord, to the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of our need. God, as we leave this place today, Lord, we'll count it an honor and a joy to be in your house. Lord, go with us as we leave this place. Father, bless us in our homes. 
bless us throughout the rest of this day. Help us, Lord, to meet you back here tonight. Father, for an outstanding service that we're so looking forward to. Father, I pray that you'd bless my brother. You'd anoint him, Father. And Lord, as he gets ready to leave, Lord, from over where he's at to come this way, God, that you just light into that car with him, Father. And you just, Lord, bless his heart so. Strengthen him, Lord, and encourage him. And Father, and help him to come tonight, Father, with a word for our souls. And that will help us and will lead us and guide us and bless us. Father, we just, we love you today and we praise you. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, we do humbly pray. Amen and amen.